Hi folks, this is Karim Rao from Ati Visualizer channel. They will continue our lab, the Red Alert Labs, the video number 108. We have been discussing in the previous video the following. We have been working now for 19 videos on discussing how to protect yourself against cyber security attacks uh, through uh, uh, following the steps uh, included in the documentation which it's called critical security controls version 8 which is provided by an organization called center for internet security which is an organization it's mainly focusing on securing different operating systems uh, different applications and uh, securing networks in general if you need to download uh, a lot of recommendations uh, uh, on securing different uh, devices and different operating systems and different applications and even different uh, network topologies uh, please go to the website of CIS and make an account and then it's for free of course so you can make an account and then you can download all of these uh, recommendations for free so we have been discussing now for 19 videos how to protect yourself against cyber security attacks there is 18 points how you can secure yourself against cyber security attacks we have discussed until now 11 points today we will cuss uh, point number 12 but let me first give you a little bit of uh, uh, a brief or a little bit of uh, uh, of a recap about what we have discussed here is a little bit of a graph let me show you all there is a little bit of a graph here about what we have discussed uh, the 12 points or the 11 points first of all the first point inventory of enterprise assets uh, uh, hardware the second point is inventory and control of assets software so the first two points in protecting yourself against cyber security attacks is to make an inventory and control of enterprise assets hardware and the second point is to make an inventory and control of your enterprise assets software the third point is data protection when it is in rest and when it is in transit then the fourth point is to secure configuration of, of enterprise assets hardware and software the fifth point is account management the sixth point is access control management uh, the seventh point is continuous vulnerability management the eighth point is audit log management and as we see here all of these are uh, or this graph it is uh, listing the points and the sub points okay included with this point and i have discussed all of these points please refer to my previous videos but here i am recapping or i am giving a brief about what we have discussed until now so the eighth point is audit log management and then we can see that the ninth point is email and web browser protection uh, the tenth point is malware defense uh, today we will discuss sorry not the twelfth point the eleventh point is data recovery and these are the sub points from this point so we will discuss today data recovery points how to protect yourself against cyber security attacks by having a clear and planned uh, docu uh, planned uh, a plan uh, to clearly document and plan a way to recover your data so this should be planned and documented so you should have a clear data recovery process guide let me show you all this point so this was a little bit of a brief about what we have discussed let me open the critical security controls and go to the point itself let's go further here is data recovery so let's see here what he's saying you need to establish and maintain a data recovery practices sufficient to restore in scope enterprise assets to a pre-incident and trusted state so here he's saying that you need to have a plan to recover the data after an incident maybe a corruption of data or maybe uh, a hacking process that have encrypted your data so you need to have a plan how to uh, recover your data and actually I think it's also stressing on to have a disaster recovery plan we have discussed before in point number three which is data protection one of the ways to protect your data is to have a backup of your data and to have uh, a backup plan and to have a recovery plan and also not also a recovery a recovery plan to have a disaster 
plan what data should be recovered first what systems should be recovered first this is also included in the disaster recovery plan so the data recovery is a part of the disaster recovery plan so you need to have a very clear documentation how you can recover your data what is the priority of recovering your data which system is uh, first need to be restored and the data within this system should be restored so this is a very critical thing to do you need to have a disaster recovery plan documented okay and to have also a data recovery plan uh, documented and listing in it in specific and in details how you can recover your data so let's see what are the points to have a good recovery of our data or to have a, a good data plan recovery first of all let's see the data recovery here it is uh, uh, listed in five sub points one two three four five so the first point is to establish and maintain a data recovery process establish and maintain a data recovery process in this process address the scope of data recovery activities recovery prioritization so you need to know what data types are you recovering what uh, that are what types of data are you covering uh, which of them are the most important to be recovered first so there is some recovery prioritization for example if you have financial data then you need to restore financial data first or you are having uh, uh, some IT system data so you need to recover them first there is some recovery prioritization and I'll show you all uh, a documentation of a university in the United States how they have a data recovery process plan or guide and also a disaster recovery plan so you need to have a plan uh, to recover your data which types of data to be recovered first uh, what is the order in which uh, systems not data are recovered so if you have some systems are corrupted which system should be recovered first this is not in the scope of this point but I'm talking in general because the disaster recovery plan it will help you to uh, plan your recovery of your uh, critical systems and the recovery of your critical data so we will see in in just about two or three minutes how we can have a good data recovery plan process so the first step is to have a very very well documented data recovery plan process you should see which data should be recovered first you should secure the backup of the data that you are recovering so we have discussed before in data protection that you need to make regular backups of your critical systems and your critical data and you should secure them in an off-site uh, tape uh, uh, storage or within the premises but within a, a secure location like a safe or something we have discussed this before in data protection okay review and update documentation annually or when significant and price changes occur that comp could impact this safeguard so you need to very well plan your data recovery process which data types should be recovered first uh, how to secure this data uh, backed up to be recovered we have discussed before you can secure the data backup by encrypting it of course and to uh, by uh, uh, storing storing it in store uh, in in safe locations we have discussed this in step number three which is data protection the second point is to perform automated backups this also was discussed in data protection point number three you need to make an automated backups of your sensitive data and sensitive systems maybe weekly maybe monthly uh, depends upon the sensitivity of the data and the, the sensitivity of the system that you are backing up and then protect data recovery protect data recovery with the equivalent controls to the original date reference encryption or data separation based on requirements so he's saying that protect recovery data that means that you are encrypting the backup okay that you are taking from this data and then when you restore it you will decrypt it so it's something called protect recovery data by reference encryption or data separation then the fourth point to establish and maintain an isolated instant of recovery data let's just wait for a moment so here we can see is also referring to you need to have uh, an instant of your uh, data sensitive data and uh, instant of your sensitive 
system backups or critical system backups to be included within the cloud okay or an offline or in an off-site uh, safe location or maybe you are having some uh, data backup okay of your sensitive or sensitive data backups and system systems backups in a safe in a bank outside your property you have said before that there is some regulations or some IT policies that uh, stated or states that you should have a backup of your critical systems and critical data uh, in a safe or in a location at least one kilometer far from your property okay there is some uh, IT policies I have seen that maybe it's stressing on this point because maybe your property uh, may be on fire or there is a disaster that happened to your property so you need to have an alternative location to, re to restore your sensitive data uh, backups and system systems backup okay then you should make test data recovery something called test restore this also was discussed in point number three you need to have uh, or to test your backups regularly of your sensitive data and sensitive system backups maybe in a lab if you have a virtual lab you can restore in it this uh, data or this system uh, backups or you should make it on spot okay or make it uh, regularly okay I think it's not uh, available on physical or it's not uh, in production environment you need your test your uh, backups in a virtual environment because this is more uh, logical because you will not uh, uh, you will not stop your production environment to restore a backup okay so you should make regular test data recovery backups okay or or regular uh, restoring your uh, backups okay so these are the five points let me show you all or return back to something here here we can see that this is our lab scenario okay so let's discuss how we can make a data recovery plan to our red alert lab so here we have seen before that we have two domain controllers okay one is the primary domain controller and the second is the additional domain controller uh, this is one role on this server and it is also the HSP server and it's also a WSOS server and it's also a file server so this server contains a lot of roles and a lot of sensitive data that should be uh, backed up carefully and should be uh, re um, uh, this backup uh, data should be also tested by making a test restore or a test data recovery and then we have we added to this scenario three servers one server is for for the financial uh, operating system and other server for the NVR or for the camera or network uh, video rec uh, video recording server this is not a server actually it is it's an appliance or it's a small device it's not a server and then we have also another server for the human resources system or uh, the fingerprint operating system or the fingerprint application to uh, sign in uh, employees and record them within the human resources system something like hits if you if you, someone knows this uh, very famous uh, human resources uh, uh, application there is also Hermes or something like this there is a lot of human resources applications so we have here one two three four we have four servers and then we have here uh, workstations that maybe contain Windows 10 uh, Windows 11 and something like this and all of these are VMs or virtual machines and we can see that all of these uh, virtual machines are putting their data or storing their data on a NAS storage or network access storage and this storage is replicating the data to an off-site or an on-cloud uh, cloud storage like uh, Azure or something so here we can see that one of the things that we have here planned to recover our data by storing it in a cloud environment this is one of the things to plan or to include in your data recovery process to list what are the cloud providers that you are saving your data to and how this process is done okay there is technical terms how you can do this for example maybe you are uh, having some uh, Azure utility installed on this NAS storage to sync the data or to send it to the cloud storage of Azure something like this you need to list it in a very uh, detailed technical guide okay so this is one thing then we need to make a plan how to recover for example data 
uh, on our financial application if the financial application is down how you can uh, recover data if our MVR is down so how we can restore videos and uh, things recorded on the MVR how we can restore data on our human resources operating system if the server is down or the database uh, attached to this human resources application is down okay or if the, uh, the database of this financial application uh, is down or corrupted you need to make a very detailed documentation about how you can do this first of all what we can do if the domain controller is down okay how we can restore this uh, primary domain controller or to work with the additional domain controller this is something called uh, recovery of the domain controller or how we can make something called transfer of Vismo roles or something how we can make the additional domain controller uh, to be a substitute of the primary domain controller okay by transferring the roles of the primary domain controller to the additional domain controller this is should be included in a very detailed documentation this will be called disaster recovery plan so you will make a disaster recovery plan what you will do if your financial application server is down as an operating system or as a database attached to the financial application so you should have a very detailed documentation how you can restore the server and restore the database attached to the application installed on the server okay so this should be uh, listed okay for example maybe you are having an image of this server and maybe you are having a backup of the database attached to the financial application you need to list the steps how you can recover data or recover database of the financial application how you can restore the operating system uh, for the uh, financial server or financial application server maybe by restoring an image or something uh, the same applies for every server and also for the domain controller how you can restore a domain controller or how you can uh, work with an additional domain controller and for example decommission this server as a whole so you work you work with the additional domain controller and then you can install a new server and make it the primary domain controller again so these are all uh, uh, disaster recovery plans or data recovery plans you should make a very detailed documentation how you can data recovery or how to recover your data and how to uh, have a disaster plan what will happen if one of this one of these servers is down so we should ha should have a very detailed documentation about this process who is responsible for restoring these servers what are the teams that are responsible for restoring your data so for example maybe the financial or the SQL database team should be in, uh, should be involved in restoring the database uh, attached to the financial application maybe restoring the operating system on the application server here should also we should include the system administrators team so there is a lot of things to be included here you need to have a very detailed plan how you can data recovery your data what systems or, or how you can restore critical systems what is the order of restoring maybe for example if the financial application is down and the domain controller is down then you should first restore the domain controller because then the financial application will be joining this domain controller or joining the domain so the financial application itself will not be able to work unless it is in a part of the domain and the domain it is uh, included or it is operating through the domain controller so you need to restore the domain controller first maybe for example if you have human resources system and financial application and both are corrupted maybe first you need to restore the human resources operating system maybe so the, all the employees can uh, enter the company or the organization and record their entrance maybe first you need to restore this so there is priorities in uh, recovering of systems and recovering of that okay so this should be planned very very well and it's not only uh, uh, should be uh, uh, included or the plan should not only include logical steps you need to have technical guides for restoring your data a very detailed documentation is how you can recover for example financial application what are the steps to recover the SQL steps one by one first we need to 
uh, restore the backup then to go to the SQL for example console or the SQL uh, ad administrator console and restore it this should be uh, uh, written okay this should be written so uh, you need to have a very detailed disaster recovery plan and to have a very detailed data recovery plan that includes logical steps what are the teams responsible for data recovery and then to have very detailed technical guides on how to recover your data and how to recover critical systems let me show you all one of the uh, documentations a very good documentations on how to data recovery this is for Southern region university in the United States so they have one they have something called uh, a disaster recovery plan one of them or one of these sections in the disaster recovery plan data recovery information let me read uh, to you what it includes he's saying that backup recovery files are required to return systems to a state where they contain the information and the data uh, that was res resident on the system shortly prior to the disaster so here is the steps that should be done when you are recovering data on a system that maybe this this system is corrupted or the data is corrupted system backups are governed by the sou backup procedure so he's saying that if you are restoring systems uh, you should uh, use backups okay used or uh, these backups are taken by a certain software maybe or backup procedure he is listing it in this documentation of the university okay backup tape locations and retention periods summarized in the table as follows he's saying the backup tapes location here is the location that you should refer to and get the backup to restore the data or restore the system state here we say that we have daily backups this in is the data center and computing services so the daily backups are included within the facility or within the university weekly backups also are included within the data center and the facility monthly backups and annual backups are in off-site storages maybe like a safe in a bank far away from the university so here we can see this is the data recovery steps or process you need to have a very good plan where are the backups where they are located how to secure these backups to make test uh, to these backups is all of these are including data recovery information let's read southern origin university does not have systems in place to backup and restore information data located on individual desktop systems throughout the campus so he is saying that he is not responsible for data recovering uh, uh, data recovery of data on laptops or on desktops okay he is responsible only for recovering data on servers okay only the servers located in data center are backed up as such only data resident on these systems will be able to be recovered so he is only responsible for recovering data on servers and uh, recovering uh, system data on servers okay in the event that a disaster occurs on the campus which destroys personal computers the information located on these computers will be extremely difficult or impossible to recover if recovery is impossible it will require outside vendor involvement at great expense to the user so he's saying here if you have personal data on your laptop or your desktop then you should save it on the file server of the campus okay it's not included here but I am saying here if you have very sensitive data not personal data work data stored on your uh, uh, personal computer or on your laptop then you should put it on the file server or on the storage of the campus maybe you have a NASA storage or something so this will be backed up do not leave your work data on your personal computer or, or on your hard disk of your personal computer or laptop so this is also we can see this is the data recovery information section for uh, the disaster recovery guide for this university we will show we will see other things the information technology department recommends and encourage the use of network drivers he's saying on servers to store all important files this is what was I was was talking about the recovery of data uh, not backed up to a network drive and or full system backups are not recovered under this plan the recovery of data not backed up on network drivers is not included within this plan so this is the data recovery information Here we can see an example 
on how we can have a guide for the data recovery process this is only section but let's go further with this university and see what they do when we are for example restoring data center and server recovery information so they have a lot of plans to recover uh, different data and different operating systems or different systems one of them is central data center and server recovery information in the event of any disaster which dis disrupts the operation in the data center reestablishing the data center will be the highest priority and a prerequisite for any IT recovery as such the information technology department this is the department responsible for recovering the data center okay is required to have detailed information and records on the configuration of the data center point number 10 or point number 9 to have a copy of the configuration of different devices within the data center routers switches and so and so and all servers and anchor equipped located in the data center so to recover data center the center includes switches routers and a lot of devices these devices contains configuration so if you will replace for example a switch or a server then the new switch should uh, you should upload the configuration or the saved configuration of the old switch on it so if you have for example a Cisco switch an old Cisco switch and you have its configuration and this switch is corrupted or uh, faulty you need to replace it with a new switch from the same model and then restore the old configuration of the old switch on this new switch okay this is one example okay detailed information is documented in our monitoring systems and infrastructure website so there is a software we have discussed this before maybe something like Cherwell or ServiceNow that should record, the, rec uh, the, record the, the configuration of the different devices within your network or within your data center the infrastructure staff team is responsible for keeping the hardware inventory up to date so there is different teams here we can see for example that there is the technology information technology department team responsible for uh, saving the configurations the infrastructure team maybe it's a sub team from the IT is responsible for keeping an inventory of the hardware of the data center this was included in the first recommendation of the CIS to have an inventory of your enterprise assets hardware because through this inventory we can re-establish the data center from the beginning okay the models like the, the, the model of the servers included in the data center the the hardware configuration how much ram how much processor so this should be included within the inventory of your enterprise has this hardware let's see network and telecommunications recovery information in the event of any disaster which disrupts the network or telecommunications again i'm stressing on this is a disaster recovery plan one of its uh, points is to data recovery how you can make a data recovery I will I will leave the the documentation of this university in a link uh, in my Google Drive okay you can see this Google Drive link in the description of the video I will include their documentation for the disaster recovery plan let's continue in the event of any disaster which disrupts the network or telecommunications reestablishing the connectivity and telephony will be of high priority and prerequisite for any IT recovery here if you have a network failure or a tele telecommunication failure recovery of these services will be accomplished in parallel or immediately following uh, uh, the recovery of the data center so if the data center is down the priority of recovering or recovery prioritization you should first restore the data center and then restore the communication so here is the recovery prioritization which we have uh, discussed in uh, here if you can see here guys here is saying recovery prioritization so we should have uh, uh, steps or uh, which should be restored first okay then he's saying that as such information technology is required to have detailed information and records on the configuration of the network equipments maybe the Cisco telephones uh, the switches of Cisco if this is a telecommunication something or uh, uh, something uh, configuration of the router maybe detailed information of switches and routers is documented in our uh, monitoring systems and infrastructure website so we can see here that they have a system for recording rec uh, configurations of the different devices okay different servers different operating systems different switches 
different routers. This was discussed in the CIS safeguard number uh, number four, securing and mean uh, establish and maintain and secure uh, configuration of the enterprise has its hardware and software. So the infrastructure and telecommunication staff are responsible for keeping hardware inventory up to date. So the infrastructure team is responsible for restoring telecommunication and not restoring to make an inventory of the network devices and of the servers in the data center. Okay, the IT team is responsible for uh, save the saving the configurations and maybe restoring the configurations of different devices. So let's go further and see what is also included in this. There is an application recovery section. So we can see here this is a very detailed da disaster recovery plan and it is stating or uh, saying which team is responsible for doing what and what is the recovery preterization or what are uh, the steps for recovering, which system should be recovered first and how this is done. Okay, by which team? Here it's not including the technical uh, steps to do this, but it is uh, saying this this in general. You should also have a very detailed technical guide for uh, describing each of these points. Again, application recovery information. Information necessary for the recovery and proper configuration of all application software located on the central servers is critical to assure that applications are covered in the identical configuration as they existed prior to disaster. Maybe you have a financial application. You need to restore the configuration of this application if it is down and to restore the database configuration that is attached to this application. So we need to have two things here. Detailed information on critical center applications will be documented in our monitoring systems and infrastructure website. Again, saving the configurations of different applications or different enterprise assets, hardware and software is very critical. You need to save, for example, the financial application server configuration. If the financial application is down on this server, you need to restore the configuration of this financial application. Okay, on a new server, maybe. The infrastructure staff is responsible for keeping the software inventory up to date. So you see clearly stating here that the infrastructure team is responsible for making an inventory of the enterprise assets, hardware and software. This maybe it is a sub team from the, uh, the IT team maybe. Okay. So maybe system administrators are responsible for saving configurations. Infrastructure IT team is responsible for making inventory of the enterprise assets, hardware and software. So let's continue again. What about desktop equipment recovery information? Information necessary for the recovery and proper configuration of all desktop computers and printers supported by information technology services is critical to assure that client systems can be restored to a configuration equivalent to a pre-disaster state. Detailed information on how client systems, both PC and Mac, is documented in our monitoring system. Again, this is uh, point number one to make an inventory of your enterprise assets, PCs and har hardware and software. The infrastructure website on Microsoft System Center configuration management database. So this is the software responsible for saving uh, or uh, making an inventory of the PCs within your network. So maybe there is two uh, softwares, one for uh, uh, recording or making inventory of the switches and routers and servers and this is maybe responsible for the clients Microsoft System Center configuration management database so this there is two things here we can see that it is clearly stating who is the parties involved in the uh, disaster recovery plan which software is used to help us in our disaster recovery plan this is all listed in the documentation and I assure and I, I need to again stress on the point to make technical, very detailed technical guides how you can uh, implement the dust recovery plan. And one of them is the data recovery and also desktop recovery, application recovery, data center recovery. This should be stated the, to, to implement these steps. We should implement them. Uh, what are the technical steps to implement these points? This also should be included. So let's go further and continue working with this uh, documentation. 
Here's, for example, general system application recovery procedures outlined. So we can see here that these are steps or a very short description who is responsible for recovering different applications and different data types. Okay, let's go here to general system application recovery procedures outline. The following steps are guidelines to be followed for the overall restoration of systems located at the South Origin University. While each recovery uh, team has specific duties and responsibilities okay so there is teams not only one team is responsible for recovery there is a lot of teams okay uh, let's see here uh, coordination between the various teams is required to restore operations of the users f to the users while the coordination and the, ex and the extent of personnel involved will depend upon the type and severity of the disaster the following steps may be required to recover general systems applications these are the steps so maybe this was a brief these are the detailed steps <coughs> for recovering uh, general systems and applications <coughs> it is implied in the procedure outline below that steps are simply provided as a guideline the magnitude and type of disaster and number of systems affected will require that certain steps be augmented okay so it's saying these are uh, general guidelines maybe you maybe need more guidelines or more details depending upon the systems affected okay uh, the at the discretion of the disaster team leads and incident command team uh, and that other steps will not be applicable to a situation at hand so this depends upon the disaster team leader anyway so these are guidelines or general steps first step determine extent of the damage and make determination as to the following so this is how you can uh, take a decision to data recovery a system or to recover a system first of all primary data center is it is operational or not so is your data system operational or not if yes remain in primary data center and initiate recovery accordingly if the data system is not uh, recoverable or it's faulty contact personnel responsible for alternative data center to prepare an alternative data center and restore and take necessary steps to ready the facility maybe you need another data center uh, put the servers in the uh, alternative data center uh, make them operational restore these servers network operation center operational so this is the data center if the data center is faulty or working okay this is the first step network operations center operational or not if the network team or the network it is faulty network cabling maybe network uh, systems uh, router switches and so network operations center operational yes utilize existing NOC for recovery okay this is the network NOC team maybe no contact personnel responsible for backup NOC and take necessary steps to redirect network routes and ready the backup facility so this is relating to the switches and routers if they are working then you should begin working with restoring uh, maybe the data center so these are steps the data center is the first one restoring data center restoring network operations the third step determine extent of application affected what is the applications affected maybe banner and other enterprise applications authentications active directory or something web servers so what applications are affected applications normal application authentication applications like active directory this is one of the things web servers maybe determine extent of desktop client systems affected throughout the compass so this is our steps maybe some steps how we can uh, restore the systems secure facility as necessary to prevent personal injury and further damage to the IT systems okay this is the so the first step is to determine extent of damage and these are the sub uh, items so the first thing to restore or to uh, or the guidelines for restoring general systems and applications first of all determine extent of damage and make determination uh, so you need to make extent of the damage if this damage is in the data center or in the network or in the applications what are the applications or in the uh, client systems so this is the first thing to determine the damage in which section data center operations applications or uh, client systems second thing to secure facility as necessary to prevent personal injury and further damage if there is a fire you need to shut down any active components 
physically secure facilities, data center, communications, closets, and so closets, and so as necessary to prevent unauthorized access. So you need to uh, determine the extent of the damage, then to secure the facility, shut down the active computers or active components to have a system for doing this, and securing the facility. If there is a fire, you need to put your data system in a fireproof thing or to uh, secure these locations. Retrieve most recent, the third point, retrieve most recent on-site or off-site backup media uh, for previous th three backups. Okay, so this is the process. You need to get off-site backups to restore it. If the uh, backups within the facility is burned or it's not working, we have seen that, it, uh, that, that the weekly backups and the daily backups are included within the university. Okay, so if these are not available or it is damaged, then you should take an off-site backup. Okay, prepare backup media for transfer to primary or secondary data center as determined during the initial assessment. So, if the data center, the primary data center is down, which was, was included in the first step, then you should take the backups and transfer it to the secondary data center. We can see these are all steps or guidelines how to uh, restore or a disaster recovery plan one of the first thing for the disaster recovery plan to determine the extent of damage if it is in data center operations applications uh, clients then to secure what is remaining from the facility okay then to retrieve the configuration of these servers or these uh, devices if they are within the primary data center if it's not intact or it is not corrupted or damaged or to the secondary data center then verify operational ability of all avail avail ability of all equipment on site in the affected area servers so and so if equipment is not operational initiate actions to repair or replace as needed so maybe your primary data center it's not faulty incomplete maybe 50 percent of the center is not working 70 percent 20 percent you should replace which what is not working and then restore the configuration to this new replaced devices okay so this is po point number four point number five test systems and communications equipment as required to validate physical operation and performance so after you are restored your data center physically and uh, i mean physically as a hardware and restore the configuration then you should test uh, these things after restoration server testing network testing desktop client testing and again you should have very detailed technical guide for doing all of the disaster recovery plan you have have technical guides on server testing technical guides for network testing technical guide for desktop client testing upon restoration of data center and service to operational state restore systems using virtualized images so this is the way you can restore the configuration through virtualized image images this is restoring the servers if necessary load operating systems and test validate if necessary load application software and validate if necessary load data and verify integrity so he is saying that you can restore servers in specific using images and then to validate these images okay if operating validate the operating system the application and the data included within uh, the server verify all overall performance of specific systems and report readiness to incident command team management team and the user community so you should make a report after the restoration is complete restoration of the hardware and configuration you should make a report about the performance of the systems okay so these are all detailed steps what we should do okay so these are seven steps first step is to determine extent of damage second point to secure facility third point to retrieve backup fourth point is to verify operational ability of equipment fifth point test systems six point restore seven points verify these are seven steps on how we can make a very or how to to make a disaster recovery or an to make a recovery of general systems applications procedures maybe this is a disaster recovery plan by the way it's not only for systems because it includes not only a uh, recovery of systems but a disaster recovery plan in general anyway so let's continue and see first or again what we can do 
here also one of these things here he is having a guide on how we can network and telecommunication recovery guidelines so these are guidelines for recovery of uh, systems general applications uh, and these four guidelines for recovery of applications and systems okay this should be included in the recovery plan and then this is another plan on how we can restore network and telecommunications we can see here that servers and central application software are located in a central facility which can be easily be assessed and secured for damage data networking and telecommunications however has equipment located in every facility at thousand origin university so saying here that maybe uh, central applications and servers are in one place but data networking and telecommunications are spreading within the university cabling and so on so so uh, in every facility at southern origin university as well as the data center remote equipment is located in communication closets often in multiple sites so he's saying that the, maybe the data networking or telecommunication is spreading within different sites for the university but the data center maybe it's in one location okay so let's see what he's talking about here uh, often in multiple sites in a single building in addition data and telecommunication cabling run throughout the campus and building make it is susceptible to varying levels of damage so this is maybe harder for restoring telecommunications because the cabling it is spreading within all of the university but maybe restoring data center is much easier because all of the servers are in one central location but the cabling it is spreading within all of the compass okay depending on the type and scope of the disaster the telecommunications network and internet services recovery team will be involved in the following activities to accredit access the overall damage and impact to the compass and assure a comprehensive plan for recovery so here we can see that there is some steps to restore network and telecommunication first of all severe storms and winds okay perform comprehensive cable fiber and communications line testing assess all communication closets and racks so if there is a storm or a severe storm uh, that maybe damage one of the fiber cables or the network cables you need after finishing of the storm to perform comprehensive cable fiber and communication line testing assess all communication closets and racks that includes the cabling fire if there is a fire evaluate all cables so these are disasters okay if you have a storm then what you should do to test the network and telecommunication if there is a fire evaluate all cable and fibers in the vicinity of the fire for potential destructions or deterioration test primary copper data feeds for destructions or deterioration evaluate and test all electronic equipments hubs switches routers that have been exposed to the water smoke or other agents so this is we can see a very detailed guide on how to restore applications systems data and network okay and I, th I think this is all it will be included in one plan which is disaster recovery plan assess all equipment with air filtration systems to assure accredited ventilation remains so this is also to have a very good inf a, 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 a ventilation system to uh, to get out the fire maybe or something okay let's continue water flood so these are situations when you have a wind situation what you should do to restore network fire to restore network the third one water flood evaluate all cable and fiber in the vicinity of the water flood for potential destruction or deterioration test primary copper okay so on so evaluate and test assess okay earthquake the same so these are all what you should do when there is certain disasters okay water flood disaster earthquake disaster uh, severe storm disaster fire so these are the network telecommunication recovery guides before that there was the uh, general system application recovery guide okay all of these are included i will show you all the pdf but this is one very detailed documentation on disaster recovery in general just recovery plan and included in it data recovery plan so let me show you all the, the documentation of this one let me open it and show you the documentation which is let me show you all uh, disaster recovery plan let me open it so this is for the southern region university information technology disaster recovery plan one of them let me show you all what what we, we were including here we can see that 
introduction, scope, assumption, definitions, and one of the things here, let me show you something, one of the things for data information recovery, this is the section for recovery preparation that I was discussing now, all of these points are within the recovery preparation, disaster recovery processes and procedures, okay, so you can see this, it's a very detailed uh, documentation about disaster recovery plan and including this disaster recovery plan data recovery plan so this is very very good documentation I, I encourage you all to read it okay it's for the Southern Origin University in the United States this is one thing and let me show you all also another documentation uh, I think for another university let me open it so this is for uh, University of Science and Technology uh, I don't know what is the name but this is a draft disaster recovery plan maybe it's 2014 here we can see also this is objectives of disaster recovery plan electronic uh, risk and prevention ele electricity related damage fire floods lighting uh, disaster preparation initiation of emergency procedures uh, equipment protection a initiation of recovery procedures maintaining the disaster recovery plan so i think this is for mabrara university okay i don't th i think maybe, maybe maybe this is in india what is mabrara let me see what is mabrara university let me copy it and see so we can open this one and see what is mabrara university so this is in Uganda okay so this is a disaster recovery plan for the Marbara University in Uganda okay so this is a very good as we can see here these are all uh, examples of a disaster recovery plan and through it we can uh, recover our data or to uh, include the point in the CIS uh, recommendations which is data recovery again let me uh, uh, summarize what we have said so we can see here if we open this one let me go further here if we go there so data recovery we have the disaster recovery plan or the one like the Southern Origin University data recovery plan or disaster recovery plan uh, perform automated backups protect recovery data by encryption and storing an offsite tape uh, uh, have an instant of our data recovery or an instant of our data on the cloud uh, test data recovery or test or making a test restore of backups okay this should be done so this is the 11th point data recovery uh, this was the documentation CIS critical security controls version 8 point number 11 point number 11 until i see you all in the next video hope this video video was informative for you all and thank you all for viewing thank you so much